remedies, natural ways to support your health and wellness and that of your family. This is a great subscription box to start with. Um, this is my very first one. I have sliced the tape open just because I don't have a tripod for my camera. So I'm doing this one handed. Uh, but I have not opened the box yet, so I'm super excited to see what all is in this month. I did read the teaser email, um, so I have, I'm familiar with what's in it. So let's go ahead and start. So on top here, we have these cute little labels. These are for on top of your jars as you make your remedies. Um, or on the front if it's like a, a dropper bottle or whatever. So we get one, two, three, four of those. Since this is my first box, I have this lovely little welcome uh, booklet. And this was also emailed to me a few days ago before the box shipped. So I was really excited to see that. Uh, I work way too much, so I didn't have time to actually go through this and really read it in detail. Uh, but I was super impressed. They, um, there's a lot of education from this company. This little booklet describes like their philosophy, um, how their curriculum works, recommended books and materials, uh, meditations. They've got three levels of, um, or they can, they kind of describe three levels of involvement. Um, the hobbyist is, you know, somebody who just enjoys making teas and experimenting, but isn't really like gung ho in depth. And then you have the student who takes it a little step further and is like just kind of starting out and learning, uh, really learning about the different herbs and products you can make with them. And then the adept is somebody who is like fully involved, reads everything line by line, word for word, um, and goes and looks at like the recommended books and articles and things like that. Um, there's also a Facebook study group, which you cannot join unless you get the subscription box. And so far, I, I really like the Facebook group. Um, then they go into their philosophy, um, recommended materials. So they recommend you keep a journal and kind of chronicle your, your journey into herbalism and building your apothecary. Um, and then other supplies like alcohol, additional storage, the different carrier oils, um, and then other supplies that'll come in handy while you're, um, learning how to make these different preparations. Then they go a little deeper um, into things that are optional. So these are like the first section of things that you're, you're kind of gonna have to have um, starting out. And then there's additional things if you get more deep into it. Um, different plant meditations, um, things you should do before, reading you should do before, how to harvest, uh, recommended vocabulary that you should be familiar with, bonus terms, terms, sorry, and the list of different herbal actions. So every herb affects the body differently. Um, aromatics are obviously things that um, affect the body by the way they smell, um, Let's see, antimicrobial is obviously something that's going to, or antiparasitic, they're going to work against uh, germs, viruses, and parasites. Antipyretics bring down fevers, antispasmatics, uh, calm spasms and seizures. Um, hepatic refers to the liver, laxative will make you poop. Um, yeah, so this just kind of discusses, you know, the different ways that herbs can affect the body um and there's they have a checklist for each of the three different levels of study whether you're a hobbyist a student or you're adept um, and then some final thoughts so that is really really handy to have in your first box oh how pretty so this is one of two um hand painted illustrations done by Virgie, which is the mother of one of the ladies that owns this business. Um, there's usually two, 
Oh, it's shrink. I wonder if they're shrink wrapped together. I wonder if I can hang on. I'm doing this one handed. Oh, yay. So I'll bet that the other one is under this one. Let's see if I can do this without bending. I like that they have it on cardboard so that I'm not as likely to bend or tear or crease. So this is Vitex Agnes Castus. I believe that's Chasteberry, if I'm not mistaken. But that's super pretty. And oh, there's the other. Yep, that's the red raspberry. And those are the two herbs for this month. Super pretty. So these are great to put in your journal. Um, as you're learning about the different herbs. And then, of course, you get your monthly booklet. Um, you can choose to get this digitally or you can get it printed. Um, I chose printed for now. I may switch to digital. Um, I haven't decided. We'll kind of see what goes with that. Um, So the theme for this month, like I said, is womb, womb wellness. And what I like about this from skimming it beforehand in my email before I got the box is it's not just for women that are pregnant and having babies and things like that. They also um, address things like hot flashes for menopause or... Um, cramps for people that are menstruating. So whether you're a maiden mother or crone, you this box has something for everybody in it. So it gives you an idea of what's inside of it. So we've got the red raspberry chase ber chase berry. The mystery bonus herb is black cohosh this month. Um, and then we get seeds for the black cohosh to plant more. Um, two four ounce glass maceration jars. That's for making tinctures and solvents and things like that. Um, two reusable muslin cloth straining bags and two amber glass dropper bottles. Uh, there's the four labels. Um, the two illustrations. We get two bonus gifts this month. We get healthy pregnancy tea by Loose Leaf Tea and Goddess Bath Salts by Wolf and Time, which is another company that I'm really interested in. So it gives you an introduction. Um, it gives you other things to read specifically on uh, womb wellness, which is super cool. Um, it doesn't just give you the little blurb in here. It also talks about, like, gives you other resources if you want to go further in depth. It gives you some, um, a basic review of the female anatomy. Um, and then herbal actions for womb wellness. So antispasmodics obviously are things that would be good for cramps. Um, galactagogues are for milk production, all sorts of things. And then in each booklet, you have your starter monographs. And they call these starter monographs because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's so much more you can learn about these herbs. So many good books that, that you can do more. So this is great for like starting your page in your little herbiary book. And then taking this and building on it um so it goes through the latin name common name botanical family um how to prepare it medicine uses and it also goes into contraindications things that work well with it or synergies history and folklore um correspondences and then magical uses um if you are on a magical path um, so it gives you those two. And what I really love is like the red raspberry leaf. You don't want to use it in the first trimester of pregnancy. Um, and it does mention that in the contraindications, but anytime, um, they have a source, they will note it 
and then after the starter monographs, you can look at the sources. I'm having a hard time with this today, sorry. Um, so the sources are numbered and these sources, these numbers correspond to where in the, mo the monograph they have referenced that information. Um, and as always, um, you definitely want to con consult your healthcare provider before taking any herbs, especially when you are pregnant. Um, and then it goes into the project ideas. Um, so, and then again, it's got another bold warning, chaseberry and black cohosh are contraindicated during pregnancy. So you really want to make sure you do read through this and read everything before using any of it. Um, yeah. All sorts of different preparations. Um, and then at the very end, they have the study checklist um, for all the different levels of study. So that's that. Let's get into the goodies. Um, so this is our first little bonus. It is a um, healthy pregnancy tea. And in it, we have, and they're all organic, but we have peppermint, ginger, nettle, red raspberry leaf, chamomile, organic wild yam, and echinacea. And it tells you what temperature to brew and steep at, how long, and how many cups you're gonna get out of this little bag. And I'm gonna give this a smell. Oh, I can smell that peppermint. Oh, that smells yummy. Mm, I'm really excited about that. And then, what is this? Oh, we're upside down. So this is our Goddess Bath Salts from Wolf and Time. And let's see. That's really in there. These things are packed very, very well. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's get out of the light here. There we go. So I'm not 100% sure what's in this. Oh, it smells really good, though. I think I smell chamomile. Oh. And I'm spilling it on my bed. I'm not sure what all is in that, but it smells very soothing, very relaxing. I wonder if there's lavender in there. I think I see some lavender. But it smells wonderful. And then, oh. Okay, one second. Let me switch hands. pretty it's like what is that I want to say like Dalmatian Jasper maybe hmm. I'll have to look that up but super super pretty alrighty so these are the two maceration jars you get they're about four ounces by volume and remember, this is for a four ounce by volume jar, but these bags are two ounces by weight. And these, this is the Chase Berry. And if you look, it's not terribly full, but this is two ounces by weight. Let's see what this looks like. That is our chase berry. It has kind of a peppery smell. 
And Chaseberry is a new one for me. I'm not too familiar with this, but it does have kind of a peppery, oregano-y kind of smell to it. And then this is our red raspberry. And this is also two ounces by weight, but look, by volume, there's a lot more. So just bear in mind when you get um, subscription boxes that are packed um, with measurements like ounces or whatever, that um, for dry goods, it's always uh, a measurement of weight and not volume, kind of like bags of potato chips. You know, they settle during shipping. And there we go, that's our red raspberry. And obviously it's the leaf, not the, the berries. Kind of smells like tea. It's got a very faint smell to it. It's not overly aromatic. So that's those. This is our other maceration jar. And this is nice, thick glass. And then these are your uh, straining bags. So once you soak your herbs um, in your jar in either your carrier oil, carrier oil or your neutral spirits like vodka or uh, a glycerite, if you want a non-alcoholic option, um, you would pour your maceration mixture into one of these bags over another kind of vessel. And then you would pull the drawstrings and you would squeeze every drop of your, uh, your liquid out of this bag. And then you would, oh, it's all wrinkled now. Um, and then you would seal and store your jar. So there's one, and this is the dropper bottle that comes with it. And let's see if these droppers are actually glass. Oh yeah. Those droppers are glass, not plastic. Which is important, especially if you're gonna add essential oils to your mixtures, um, whether you want a little more aromatic boost or if you want to add um, some synergistic essential oil essences, a true essential oils will degrade plastic. So if you're going to use essential oils in any kind of concoction, make sure you're always storing it in a glass bottle, glass jar, and if you use a dropper, then it's a glass dropper. Um, and this is our other bag and dropper. Let's just move these to the side. And then this is our black cohosh. This is another one I've never actually worked with. Um, so I'm interested, and this is only an ounce. So your mystery herb is only gonna be an ounce instead of two ounces. Um, let's see what this looks like. Okay. Actually, kind of smells like dirt. I wonder if it's the bark. Not sure. But we will put that off to the side. This, oh, I forgot we got seeds. So these are the black, black cohosh seeds. So we've gotten 10 of those. They're very, very tiny. Kind of cute. And then it's got the sowing and transplanting directions for that. So you can grow your own. And what do we have down here? So we've got a little health disclaimer. Um, again, this is not a substitute for seeing a healthcare provider. Um, and it is your responsibility to research any herbs that you intend to use internally or topically. Um, and that's a really good point. You know, um, 
there is a lot of information out there, a lot of good information and a lot of, you know, questionable information. So know how to evaluate your sources and make sure that the information that you're relying on is factual and um, reliable. Um, don't believe every Facebook guru that you come across. Um, there are some really great ones out there, but I mean, there, there are people that are, you know, not quite as reputable. So that's it. Thank you for watching my unboxing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this video a like and a share if you enjoyed it. Um, and let me know if there's any other boxes you want me to review. I currently get the Tamed Wild. I will probably do an unboxing for the next one that's coming up for this month of April. I also recently just signed up for the Witch's Moon, the Witch's Bounty, and the Witch's Roots. Um, I'm really interested in the Witch's Moon and the Witch's Roots, which is another apothecary-ish kind of box. Not so sure about the Witch's Bounty because that focuses more on jewelry and I'm not really a jewelry person per se. I have some pieces that I wear occasionally. I am a nurse by trade, um, so I don't wear really any jewelry at work. Um, I don't even wear my earrings at work. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be a good fit for me. Um, and that's also the most expensive of three boxes. Um, the three all together are like almost $180 if you're in the U.S. Um, but yeah, if there's any other like herbalism or witchy kind of boxes you want me to review, let me know. I'm happy to give them a try. And I think that's where we will end it for today. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Bye.